All right, so today we are going to be going over how to calculate uh, the flooded charge of a uh, condensing unit that has a head pressure control valve on it. We are going to be basically following the instructions in the Sporlin 90-30-1 document verbatim pretty much, okay? Um, you get this document from Sporlin's website. Uh, I'll also have a link in the show notes of the video. You guys can go and get it yourself, okay? So um, I basically highlighted a few things, and just to reiterate, this is the Sporlin document 90-30-1, okay? So um, I highlighted a few things inside this document that I, the basic instructions that we're going to follow, okay? Number one, we're dealing with a completely flooded condenser, okay? And then you're just going to follow the instructions from that point, all right? So um, it's going to tell you to get the length of tubing, the return bins, and the condenser. You need to know the minimum ambient temperature at which the system is going to operate, okay? That's going to affect the density factor of the refrigerant. Uh, we also need to know the tubing size and wall thickness and the refrigerant type, okay? And then you're just going to follow these instructions. And it gives you an example with some demo numbers so that way you can do the math with yours and uh, with these demo numbers and see if you can come up with the same example, okay? So we're going to go through that right now. When it comes to needing the, um, the density factor of the refrigerant, okay, what you're going to do is you're going to find on the next chart over, you're going to find the minimum ambient temperature. Uh, this is for our example, the system that I was working on was in Irvine, California. So the absolute extreme lowest temperature we're going to get in Irvine, California is 20 degrees. Okay. And that number is going to, you just basically follow it over to determine your density factor of your refrigerant. Okay. And we are using R22 refrigerant. So the density factor of our refrigerant is point of our, our, yeah, is 0 0.052, okay? And then you also need to find the total equivalent length of the refrigerant tubing. So in our video, like I show you, we have 3 8 tubing, so we follow the chart down, and you basically find out that for 3 8 tubing, the total equivalent length is 0 0.200. So with that being said, we're going to get on with the video, and uh, hopefully this makes sense for you guys. Okay. So we're going to measure the flat of the condenser run, okay? So we come on over, and that's 30 and a half, so 30.5. We'll take that number, and then we're going to count how many straight pieces of pipe there is and also how many return bends there are. Okay, so now we're going to count the pieces of straight pipe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. So there's 36 pieces of straight pipe and it's 3 8 inch in diameter. So now that we have that number, we can also count our return bins. So return bins, we're going to go ahead and count this as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 16 return bins. Then we got to come over to the other side and do the same count over here. All right, so on this side, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen return bins. So then we'll sit down and do those numbers out on a paper and we'll explain the process. Okay, so now that we have the measurements for the condenser, we'll do the math and we'll figure that out. The next thing we need to know is what our bypass pressure of the headmaster or head pressure control valve is 180 psi. So on a proper startup on this system, what we would do is we would uh, vacuum it down, you know, all that good stuff, okay? Once we pass our decay test, we're gonna go ahead and add refrigerant to the system. When we add refrigerant to the system, we're actually going to probably shut off the condenser fan motor or block it off one or the other, and we're gonna let the system operate while we're adding gas. Turn it on, you're adding, you know, through the vapor side or through the suction side. You're gonna add refrigerant, and we're going to get our head pressure above 200 head pressure, or 200 PSI, or exactly 180 PSI. Once we get above that, we know that the head pressure control valve is not going to bypass. And we simulate, you know, we block off the condenser to do so. 
we keep adding gas until we clear our sight glass. When we clear our sight glass above 200 head pressure or 200 PSI, it, again, whatever the stamped number is, so if this is a newer headmaster, it might say 150 PSI, okay? But just whatever that number is, you need to be above that number. Clear the sight glass. Then we know we have the proper operating charge for the system if we weren't bypassing on our head pressure control valve, okay? Then that's when the calculation comes in. We add the winter charge. After we've cleared the sight glass above the, the, the bypass pressure of that guy, and obviously the system needs to be close to being down the temp, then we add the winter charge, which is whatever we do with the mathematical calculation. That would be called our flooded charge. We add that to the system. Then we know that we're properly charged if that head pressure control valve was to ever bypass. Okay, so the first thing we do is we're just calculating our numbers out, okay? So the total measured length of the straight tubing was 30 and a half inches. We measured that out, or 30.5 inches. Then we gotta convert that to feet because that was in inches, okay? So we're gonna take basically 30.5 and divide it by 12 inches, which equals 2.54 feet of measured straight tube. Then we need to multiply the 2.54 feet by the total number of straight tubes of 36. Okay, so to do that number, basically we come up with 36 times 2.54 feet equals 91.44 feet of measured straight tubing. Okay, then we're going to take our return bends and we count it out. And when you add up the two numbers that I came up with, we come up with 34 total return bends. Okay. We take our total equivalent length of each return bend, and that's 0 0.200 feet per return bend. We multiply that by the total amount of return bends. 34 return bends times 0 0.200 feet equals 6.8 feet of total length of copper tubing inside the return bends. Okay. Then we're gonna met or we're gonna add up that 6.8 feet plus the total measured length. So 91.44 feet plus the 6.8 feet equals 98.24 feet of calculated refrigerant tubing, all right? Then we're gonna take the total calculated length, multiply it by the density factor, which we found on the chart for R22 refrigerant at the minimum ambient temperature, which was 20 degrees. So 98.24 feet times 0 0.052 equals 5.11 pounds of R22 refrigerant. And to make it a little bit easier on ourselves, that is not five pounds, 11 ounces. That is 5.11 pounds. So let's go ahead and convert that over to pounds and ounces. So basically take the 5.11 pounds, okay? Drop the five pounds and take the 0.11 pounds, multiply it by 16 ounces, and you come up with 1.76 ounces, okay? So that's five pounds, and we're gonna round that number up just to make our life easy. So we're basically gonna go, total winter charge is five pounds, two ounces of R22 refrigerant. All right, so hopefully that didn't confuse the hell out of you, um, and it kind of makes sense, okay? It's really not that hard of a calculation to do, but the first time you do it, it's gonna take you a good half hour, 45 minutes, and then every time after that, it's gonna get quicker and quicker. Um, honestly, by the time you figure out how to do that, it's going to end up taking you longer to measure everything out than it actually is to do the math really quick. Okay. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video. This has been something that people have asked me about before. Um, now what I would highly, highly suggest is, is once you've calculated this amount and you've added it to the system on top of the normal summer charge. Okay. Um, I would con uh, highly suggest that you mark that receiver, okay? So that way you can pump it down, find the liquid level in the receiver at any time after that and know that this is going to be the properly calculated flooded charge, all right? That way it just makes it easier on yourself. And, and again, I've told you guys the method of, of heating up the receiver. You have to use some kind of heat producing device that doesn't exceed the temperature of the soft plug on the receiver. You're going to pump the system down, store all the refrigerant in the receiver, then basically take that heat producing device, go up and down the receiver once or twice, and then take the back of your hand and starting at the bottom, feel up the receiver until you feel the high temperature mark. And that's going to be the liquid level in the receiver. So once you've calculated properly the flooded charge using the 90-30-1 method, I would highly suggest you mark the receiver with a paint marker. So then from that point forward, if you ever have a leak in the system, you know that you just need to fill up to that marked level. 
Another method too that you could do is putting the maximum amount of refrigerant in the system, which you would have to lean on the refrigerant manufacturer uh, or the system manufacturer to find out what the total maximum charge is. Then you put that amount in, you know you can't add any more gas to the system. And if the system was properly charged right, that'll be more than enough gas to properly flood the condenser uh, during the winter time. Okay, um, that's pretty much it, guys. See you guys later.